G'day folks. Well, I thought I'd show you some of the uh, progress on rectifying the compressor kill panel. And I say that, I mean I want a DC plug-in adaption for it. Um, I'm going to be using these diodes here which came out of the giant VLT drive that I scrapped. Giant variable frequency drive. They're a Semicron SKR60F15. So it's a 60 amp fast rectifier diode, a stud type, with an eyelet on it. Um, these came out of a very big VFD and well they were wired up like this. Here's the old one of the boards with one microfarad 1200 volt DC polyfilm caps across it. They were wired on there like that. You had two red positives and two blacks which I think were negatives or at least just colour coded that way anyway. Um, yeah, there's DC positive, which is red side, and DC negative. Uh, they had single pack IGBT bricks, all of which I still have. I think they're 1200 volt, 400 amp bricks. Um, they plug in there like that one is. That's in its respectable place. And yeah, I don't have much use for the whole assembly as it is, so I'm going to strip it for the caps and these rectifiers. But all this other stuff will come in handy one day. I'll probably end up using this sort of cable for Project Mini Thumper, which is the big cat bank that came out of this BFD. Don't know what those are. They're a Busman 250 amp, 1000 volt um, thingamajig. Don't really know what they're for. Probably a blocker. A little vent thing on it. Bleed, bleeder resistors for the cap bank two packs of them that's actually out of an industrial forklift battery charger it's a half wave no sorry full wave three phase rectifier it's got three leads leading in but I always thought you only needed two diodes for full wave on a center tapped three phase transformer uh, there's a third one there which must just be for blocking reasons um, they're not much use unless I want to build a single or a half wave single phase rectifier and they're just way too big that's the in input side from the VFD, single or oh, sorry, three phase input. That's the output to the DC motor going through the CTs. Noticeably smaller, but that's probably because it's DC going out. Uh, yeah, there's some more diodes there. There should be two, three packs of these. So 8, 12 of them, 12 of these Semicron 60 amp ones, so if I blow a few up experimenting it shouldn't matter. They're $23 each brand new, so if I get a good few uses out of them before I pop them it doesn't really matter at all. So it's going to be good fun. But yeah, I might eventually set up with the uh, bigger ones. These leads were attached to some very big Semicron power bricks, there are uh, SCR packs which turn the initial AC in into DC I believe. Either that or they actually just fired off the DC in certain certain stages, or sorry the AC. It doesn't really make sense if they've already got diodes going through here which obviously can't handle the amperage but I think they're committed, connected to the emitter of the IGBT brick. So I'm not really sure what they've done there. Obviously the tiny little leads on these things cannot handle the amperage this drive's putting out, so that must be a control. That would be a control voltage. And the SCRs, the input bricks, actually turn the current, turn the volt, turn the power into DC. Yeah. I should look back on those videos that I did on it and just see just how it's arranged. I was in a bit of a hurry to get rid of it, so I pulled it apart pretty quick. Oh, well, that'll do for now, and once I get some diodes set up as a full wave rectifier, I'll do another video. Okay, well I just looked these things up on the web, which I should have done earlier, and it's actually a semiconductor fuse. I've got no idea if it's still alright, but with a price like that, six of them have got to be worth something on eBay. I know I'll never use them, but shit, six of these things, if they're in good working order, they've got to be worth something. I mean, this 
This is uh, AI consolidated selling these. I haven't checked any other prices, but it sounds about right for 250 amps, 1000 volt fuse. That's pretty cool. All this stuff's worth a fair bit. Like these IGBT bricks are worth about $800 each, brand new. That's not cheap. Okay, well I've made a basic bridge rectifier. The leads aren't connected yet, but basically that's your negative, that's your positive. These diodes are reverse polarity. The ones with the black lead allow alternating current or power to go that way. The ones with the red lead allow it to go that way. So with these leads tied together as your AC in through there, you get negative and positive DC out. Um, yeah, always study your semiconductors and look at which way the arrow is pointing. I think I got that right either way. You uh, look it up on the net. Really simple. Quick Google search. Shows you exactly how a bridge rectifier works. I just pulled that up for reference. Uh, and yeah, as long as you get it right, magic smoke shouldn't come out. At least not until you push it past its limit. Then you'll get magic smoke. Uh, Always make sure you've got plenty of rectifiers on hand in case that happens, but it should be right. I'm slowly assembling the bridge rectifier. I'm using this old fuse holder out of the BFD. It was a 200kA uh, 450 amp fuse holder. That's the old fuse that came out of it. Instead of having the fuse across it, I'm going to use it as a rectifier post. It's got these nice big heavy copper, copper alloy heat sinks. Um, it's copper aluminum heat sink actually. Uh, I thought they were tinned copper at first but once I started drilling into them I realized it wasn't pure copper but it's a lot heavier than normal alloy. It's actually stamped on the end there. CU slash AL copper aluminum. Uh, just dab these with a fair bit of heat sink paste. I've drilled and tapped four M6 holes and just screw them in nice and tight in the correct order of course, paying attention to the symbols on them. Those ones there are pointing up, the arrows are pointing up, these two here are pointing down, being positive and negative side. And there's some extra heavy outputs there. I'll probably end up pulling one of these off and put it on the other side. No way I'm going to be transferring that many amps through it. I mean, that's a lot of amps to re require two cables of that size. These are only 60 amps each, so it's definitely overkill. Okay, well it's the next day, and I did a bit of finishing off last night. I soldered those bridge plates in there. Um, this is going to be alternating current going in, and I can tap off these terminal blocks for direct current going out. Uh, because each diode's rated at 60 amps, it's only 60 amps, you don't combine them. Um, as I said before, these cases vary in their polarity. That one, the arrow is pointing down, those are the arrows pointing up. So they can be uh, mounted in this configuration without blowing anything up. It's good. So we'll have a bit of a play with that. I was hoping to get some components in, but uh, that didn't happen. So I'm not going to be fixing LCDs tonight. I got this one from work just as a freebie. They tend to throw the older model LCDs in the rubbish bin, so. I figured I'd put in a word and try and score all the old ones as they get replaced with new ones. It's only 8 millisecond, it's not that crash hot. But it's the same as the uh, other one that I got off Jay the Aussie that has the scratches and the missing base. And I know exactly what's wrong with it. Power supply failure. Starts up for a half a second, just enough for the logo to show, and then out again. It's just dead caps. So let's... Uh, wire something up and have some fun. Might try that treadmill motor or starter motor or something. Something big that'll show on the DC amp meters or the AC meters going in. I'm going to be wiring through the ballast and coming out of here to the rectifier bridge. That wire is a bit underrated for the size of this stuff but this isn't going to see that much current. I just overbuilt it for the hell of it. One day it might see some serious amps, like enough amps to melt these bus bar plates. That would be interesting. Well, I figured I'd bit better improve the AC input and put a little terminal block here. The trouble is it's still a bit flexible and it puts load on these uh, pins coming out of the rectifiers, so 
I'm doing a bit of machine work with a bit of a seatal make a spacer. I've already bought it and now I'm doing something which is kind of dangerous but because it's plastic it's not really liable to damage the chuck or come flying out. I've just clamped it between the jaws, it's a synchronous four jaw. It might work on a three jaw as well, I don't know. I probably won't but yeah, I don't recommend trying this at home. 